What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Also hit the bell notification so you don't miss any updates that I uh, put out. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Isaac. She's gonna tell us all about the wonderful field of podiatry, why she chose to um, uh, go down that route, and some tips for you guys. Dr. Isaac, I'd like to thank you uh, for joining me uh, today. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Dr. Sarepta Isaac, I'm practicing podiatrist here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm in private practice, uh, graduated residency in uh, 2015. So, you know, fairly new practitioner um, mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, going through that and navigating through new practice and, and yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, what was it about podiatry that got you interested in? Why did you choose to go to podiatry school? So for me, it was uh, a personal experience. Um, I actually had a family member who um, was a diabetic. You mm. know, a lot of us know. Yeah. You know, or know people who are diabetics. And, um, and she suffered with a lot of foot problems. So mm. kind of growing up, you know, I would hear you know, family members, my mom just talking about, you know, auntie so-and-so, she has that foot issue again. And she would have, you know, routinely have to go back to her podiatrist and do follow-ups and, you know, there's a lot of wound care involved. Mm -hmm. and she ultimately um, lost both of her legs. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so she was uh, wheelchair bound and she eventually passed away just from all the complications mm -hmm. dealing with that. So um, early on, that kind of, you know, stood out to me how, you know, you think about growing up, you think about being a doctor, you think about, yeah. you know, just all fun and, you know, you're just going to yeah. help people and everything's going to work out great. But that experience with her, with I guess with me always hearing about the podiatrist, yeah. you know, that was the doctor that she always went to in her specific situation. And that stood out to me. Um, and after undergrad, I actually had a chance to shadow with a podiatrist because I just mm -hmm. well, that experience followed me. Um, and I ended up falling in love with the field. And so, gotcha. And can, can you talk about your transition from college to podiatry school? Did you go straight through, or did you have um, did you do something in between? No. So actually, I didn't. Um, after undergrad, I went to undergrad in New York City. I went to Pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Love to shout that out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so, you know, like a lot of us, you know, I was a pre-med major, had a majored in bio, minored in chemistry, mm -hmm. always knew. So podiatry was always in the back of my mind, like, yeah, yeah very intriguing. Um, but didn't actually pursue um, right after. I didn't apply to podiatry school. Right after I sort I worked, um, after I graduated from Pace, I worked in a lab just to kind mm -hmm. of gain that I think like a lot of us, you know, depending on what your experience is, you know you want to possibly go into the field of health and become a physician, but mm -hmm. there might be certain obstacles, you know, finances, family obligations, or just you're kind of just unsure. Um, so I took some time off. I actually took four years off. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I took four years off. I graduated from Pace in um, 2003. Mm -hmm. and then entered podiatry school until 2007, but kind of just worked in the health sector mm -hmm. and so I, you know, just made my final decision and went ahead and applied. Yeah, so you were a non-traditional student. Yes, right. very much so, you know, yeah. especially with four years, you're kind of pushing against the <laughs> Why not even be going anymore? Yeah. <laughs> you could have been done, you, you know. Yeah. Um, um, uh, yeah. can, can you talk about the requirements to become a podiatrist or even apply to podiatry school? I know the <laughs> medical school, we have to take the MCAT. Sure. And, you know, typical biology, chemistry. Is there a similar admission test for podiatry school? Yeah, it is very similar. I think, you know, um, gosh, that's why I actually was thinking about that today. Uh, so I took the MCAT and, mm -hmm. you know, all the people that I knew took the MCAT also. Oh, okay. I believe that that is, I'm, I'm almost 100% positive that that is um, the only admission test. Gotcha. That, okay. That's now, we don't have a separate, you know, podiatry sort of kind of admission test. That's, that's you know, those are the scores that they use mm -hmm. um, for admission. And then all your prerequisites, your, you know, your biology, your chemistry, yeah. your organic. So you really either have to be a pre-med major or, you know, sometimes people take the other route by majoring in something else and then just taking those pre-med, you know, yeah. classes. But 
get all those are, are requirements for admission. Got gotcha. you. So th theoretically, you can apply to medical school and podiatry school at the same time if you just right. want to be a doctor. Got right. Sure. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and how was podiatry school for you? Is it similar to medical school where the first two years are clinical and the third and fourth year or first and second year of classroom and third and fourth are clinical? Is that how it is? Yeah, very similar. We take, okay. you know, I've heard comparisons where we take mostly the same classes. The first two years we take our, you know, our biochemistry or yeah. I don't even remember anymore. I'm dating yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, all the stuff that we take. Um, and then, um, our third year, we transition into clinical. So we, mm -hmm. we have clinics and externships, and we have rotations that we do. Then our fourth year, we focus on, a lot on the lower, mostly on the lower extremities. So gotcha. we have gotten our internal medicine, emergency medicine rotations, everything is, you know, gotten out of the way during the third mm -hmm. year. In the fourth year, you really are hammering down. Okay. The, yeah. And once you graduate, uh, do most people do a, um, a residency, or can you go straight to work uh, right out of podiatry school? So residency is required. It's required. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, it's at least a three year residency. Mm -hmm. uh, most residencies are three years. There are a couple that are four years mm -hmm. um, now, and the residencies are both um, medical medicine and surgical residencies, which gotcha. you know a lot of people do not know. Um, so our residencies are are structured much like every you know mm -hmm. other surgical residency is. Um, so we again take all of our clinical rotations, your mm -hmm. internal medicine. So you rotate, you know. In radiology and um, general surgery, yeah. you know, um, and then um, our second and third year, you are focusing on your surgical, you know, techniques. And you, in your third year, mostly you're doing, you know, your trauma, your, your lower extremity trauma. And yeah. every residency is a little bit different, structured a little different, but those uh, core requirements are the same throughout. So it's at least three year residency. That you Got you. Do. And what are some potential fellowship options after residency that you can do? Sure. Um, so there, um, I, I didn't do a fellowship, but a lot of colleagues of mine did complete trauma fellowships. Trauma. Fellowships are also very popular in podiatry just because of the, you know, the number of diabetics that we see and the complications mm -hmm. with the low extremity uh, as, as it pertains to diabetes. Um, yeah. You know, so trauma and, and wound care um, are some that I could kind of name off the top. Gotcha. And I, I know you mentioned your private practice in Atlanta. Uh, what, what is a typical day for you? Kind of usually starts at what time and then ends at what time? You're in clinic some days and OR other days. Yeah. So, so my, um, so I've chosen to. Uh, another thing with dietary, I should mention is that a lot of people uh, like to subspecialize. So I actually kind of subspecialize in geriatrics. Really? So, wow. Yeah. So, so people, you know, decide to go into either pediatrics, dermatology, wound care is a big thing. I mean, you can form a whole practice in podiatry around diabetics. Mm. Wow. I know that. <laughs> this will be very busy. Yeah. Um, so I have a little bit of a different practice where um, I see 95% of my patients are geriatrics yeah. and they come with their own unique sort of um, needs, ambulatory issues, a lot of circulation mm. um, issues. Um, and so, you know, typical day, I start about nine o'clock, you know, mm -hmm. and I go until I'm done. <laughs> I like yeah. But yeah, I give it to, you know, around five o'clock, I, I sort of wrap it up. Mm -hmm. uh, about 25 patients per day. Mm -hmm. um, I, see, I, I have a mobile practice. It's a mobile. So I travel around to different nursing homes and assisted living facilities and see patients there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it can become, you know, very busy. But in the office, you know, you can, you'll see a whole gamut of things from um, dermatology issues, you know, lesions on the foot to heal problems to mm -hmm. fractures. Oftentimes you're diagnosing in the office, um, to, you know, so it's just kind of like a whole skin problems, uh, you know, corns, calluses are also a big part of our practice. Um, it's just... You know, we joke in podiatry and we say that within podiatry, you can see, I mean, just all, you know, yeah. <laughs> within podiatry. Gotcha. And your operating days, uh, what, what type of surgeries do you normally perform as a podiatrist? So a podiatrist, you normally would perform um, anything from bunions. Bunionectomies mm -hmm. are a big, you know, podiatrists are known for yeah. these hammer toe surgery. But from that to things like ankle fractures, mm -hmm. you know, we are licensed and certified to um, fix the ankle. You know, we mm -hmm. can treat the foot and the ankle in a lot of places, in a lot of uh, times, soft tissue up to the knee. 
And so um, anything from that, anywhere from cosmetic surgeries to, um, you know, to trauma, things trauma related. So. Gotcha. And, gotcha. And once someone is done with their um, podiatry school, your residency, and then if you may happen to do a fellowship, I know it varies by your location, but how much can a podiatrist uh, expect to make like, once you're done with all your training? Yeah, I get that question a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, you know, again, it depends, right? Yeah. It depends what you want to put it in. It depends the procedures you want to do. But if I had to guess, I would say anywhere from, gosh, you know, starting 150, 150 to 250, mm -hmm. okay? You know, somewhere around that. Again, mm -hmm. depending on how much you want to put into it, you know. Um, and I say that based off, you know, personal experience. I've been out for three years now, mm -hmm. yeah, three years now, and I can say that those are the numbers that were kind of quoted to us, and I could, yeah. you know, that's true. Yeah, gotcha. that's right. And can you speak briefly about your uh, experience growing up in Haiti and now kind of living here and uh, <laughs> kind of that transition? Oh, I love that question. <laughs> well, actually, I wasn't, my parents were born in Haiti. Okay. You know, born here, but I had, the question is still wonderful because I had a traditional Haitian upbringing. So yeah. I could have just, I could have very well been born in Haiti. <laughs> yeah. Right? First generation. I um, actually grew up with my mom. You know, mm. my mom that separated. So uh, first generation, my mom didn't speak any English. You yeah. know, um, kind of, sort of speaks it now after 30-something years. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so I say all that just to say that it was um, – very challenging, you know, to kind of wanting to want to go into a field, you know, want to go into medicine where, yeah. you know, your parents can't really help you in that aspect. Yeah. My mom always knew she, you know, she encouraged me to, you know, go to school, but she really couldn't help me. You know, I didn't, my mom was a doctor, you know, like yeah. a lot of yeah. people I went to school yeah. with, who their parents were kind of just waiting for them to graduate to pass on the practice. This, right? right that wasn't my situation right I didn't have you know I student loaned everything mm -hmm. um and I kind of had to make the best decisions you know in every state you know stage my mom couldn't really put, give any input on the residency she was just like yeah. no I can just pray for you yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just pray yeah. for you um so you know it, it was it was very tough you know it was um it was an experience that a lot of friends of mine in school could not relate to yeah they, they couldn't relate to it but i could say that it certainly made me who i am today you know it made me a better person i think it really helped um make me the physician that i am today mm -hmm. in the sense that i can relate to different people i think when you grow up in a certain situation um you are flexible in your practice where you can relate to different types of patients yeah, right? exactly. yeah. patients who is highly knowledgeable about their condition and is taking their medication and all that. And I can also relate to that patient who probably can't read the prescription that I've just written. Yeah. You know, because they don't, you know, and maybe got no education or so I can so that has helped me to have that empathy and that sympathy. Um so it was tougher. Um mm -hmm. but you know kind of makes you who you are at the end. Gotcha. Um, and can, do you have any advice for students out there who may be interested in a field of podiatry or just becoming a surgeon and in general, what, what kind of advice would you give them? I would say, gosh, there's tons, but um, if I had to give one piece of advice, I would say, you know, stick with it. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, you know, we use that nonchalantly, like you can do it and, but you know, I don't, I don't lie to those that I'm kind of mentoring and giving advice to and tell them, oh, you'll be fine. Like, there will be times where you won't be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, I wasn't always fine in residency. I have yeah. those and, and, um, but you definitely can do it. Yeah. If others, I, I try to point out, if others have done it, and, and, you know, if they can do it, what's the difference between you and them? Yeah. You, you might there might be an exam there might be a subject that comes up or you know a rotation that comes up that's particularly hard for you but if you stick with it you know there are people in medicine that have overcame i mean incredible odds such as yeah. your book <laughs> yeah. Your book. <laughs> yeah. And if they can do it you can do it if you really want to do it exactly the, i think it's if you really want to do it that's what makes the difference gotcha so, yeah. All right. Um, uh, and I always ask my guests this uh, three last questions. You can give it one, one or two or uh, answer. Um, what is your favorite food? 
Um, favorite sushi. <laughs> sushi? Okay, that's good. Uh, what is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? Um, I love to write. You have to write? Okay. Yeah, I love to write, yeah. And do you have a particular surgery in podiatry that is your favorite thing to, what's your favorite operation? Oh, gosh. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, wow. This is going to sound gruesome, but I love INDs. INDs? I'm sorry. I can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when that diabetic comes in or that necrotizing fascia comes in, that severely infected foot comes in, really smelly. And yeah. It's just gets you're, so you're just all in it. <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, uh, IND just means irrigation and debridement. Uh, you uh, wash out and try to rid the body of infection. So yeah, you know, I just feel like you get so much satisfaction from that. Yeah, yeah. being yeah. able to save that limb, you know. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Doctor Isaac, I'd like to thank you uh, for you know sharing your your knowledge, your inspiration to uh, all of us out here. Um, so thank you so much. If someone wanted to contact you in the Atlanta area or just wanted to contact you in general, how, how can I get a hold of you? Sure. Um, they can visit my website. It's probably the best way. Um, it's Dr. Sarepta. So it's uh, D-R-S-A-R-E-P-T-A.com. Uh, and um, there's a contact me form on the website. And, I'll, you know, reach out. And I would love to talk and answer more questions. And Yeah. Awesome. And I'll put the link in the description for uh, the website. Dr. Isaac, thank you so much again. Uh, everyone else out there, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll see you next time.